All right. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Just make sure that you continue inviting out your teams. Um, this is a meeting that happens every Wednesday at the same time, 1 p.m. Mountain Daylight. Um, we're just going to get started off with a couple announcements. Stu, do you have those prepared or can I start us off? No, I, I can start us off. Um, knowing that it's coming down to the ending of the month, we have about a week left. I hope everyone's doing well, um, being an example towards and for your teams. But just a reminder to help you in this last week, uh, we're running that promotion um, for March, where if you buy between 200 and 479 PV, you'll get a free bottle of genomics. And in addition to that, or, or you know, on top of that, if you buy a pack that has a PV of 480 or more, you'll receive two bottles of genomics. So a lot of giveaways, a lot of good ones. Um, we encourage you guys either to um, sign a new distributor up or just have someone reorder um, within these points and then you'll be able to get, um, they'll be able to receive a, a free bottle of genomics. Um, in addition to that, um, we're still doing our weekly raffle um, with Sinead. So make sure you can enroll a distributor within Aero or Iro, however uh, you want to pronounce it, pack or one of the premiums pack, and then you get an entry into one of the um, raffles for a free coaching session with uh, Sinead. And I heard those are wonderful coaching sessions. She does four of them. And everyone who attended that or have participated in that had phenomenal results. Um, she, she's a wonderful nutritionist and stylist, um, lifestyle coach. Um, so that'll be wonderful. And there's no limit on how many raffles you can win. So for every distributor you sign up on the Aero Pack or um, a premium pack, you'll receive an entry into these drawings that we do. Um, and I think the next one will be on Monday. So we encourage you to finish the month strong, um, to be a good example in your teams and to be the leader that everyone is expecting you to be. So with that, I'll send it back to you, Phil. Awesome, thanks so much, Stu. Okay, so this is important for all of our distributors, so make sure you get this passed around. Um, the call center is gonna have extended hours on March 31st. They're gonna be working until 8 p.m. Mountain Daylight time as we are approaching the end of the month. Uh, as well, we have a new call schedule. I've sent a couple graphics out over the past, or in the past. Uh, I'll continue to do so during these calls. Um, our product training is on March 30th. Okay, there's, there's five Tuesdays this month and we have four events planned. So we have to kind of pick and choose how we're gonna do it. For this month, we're planning on doing an additional product training. So make sure you jot that down for the fifth Tuesday this month. Active school as well is going to be changing to the second Saturday of the month. That means that April's active school is taking place on the 10th, the 10th of April, 9 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time. So jot that down as well. Uh, I wanted to make sure that you knew that we are on Telegram. This is actually, we're putting a big emphasis on this one. We use WhatsApp and we use Telegram, but because Telegram is newer, it allows for less limits. We really wanna make sure that you and your teams are aware of it and are participating on that app. Um, so I'll send a link here in the chat once we have a minute. Uh, beyond that, those are my announcements. Uh, I'm really excited to get us started um, with our special guest, a couple of quick remarks. Uh, Christina Godoy, thanks so much for being here. You have prepared some ideas, some thoughts, and some experiences I imagine you would like to share with us. So go ahead and take the floor. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. Um, I want to share with you something that I've been doing for the last year. As an A15, I started doing this training where I choose around 40 people from my organization. Uh, it's been a year. So 40 people from my organization that they reach out to me and say, I wanna be trained by you, I wanna work with you. And I said, really, why? And that's my first question. Why do you want me to train you? Um, and I kind of wanna see first, um, what is their need for that training? Or, and what is their expectation? Um, and I started choosing people based only on that question. And then I asked them, how long you've been in actives? And what is your vision for this business? So I choose around 40 people with, knowing that they're going to finish the training um, around 12. 10 to 12 people generally finishes this training. I do it every quarter. And 
it's it's been you know I'm finishing tomorrow finishes the fourth uh, quarter that I've been doing the fourth training and I'm learning a lot of things. People think that I'm teaching them a lot, but I honestly I feel like I am actually the one that has been learning a lot from these trainings. And I want to share that with you because it's a different perspective. Doesn't mean it's the right perspective. It's just my experience and my perspective. So. I apply different levels of growth. I took a lot of notes because I don't want to leave anything um, aside. So I apply different levels of growth um, with different activities that are not related to the business, but their perspective, when it's applied to the business, it makes the business, um, it makes the business uh, easier to do, easier to do, right? So we have activities and we have points and, um, when they go through these activities that are not related to the business in some cases, they apply the perspective and now the business seems more attainable, more doable, okay? So um, that I've noticed are a common, I've noticed something, it's a common denominator. And now I can say that most of us come here to this business because we wanna fix something. We want to, alter something in our lives, right? So I could say based on my own life that most of us come here because we're broken. We are broken. We wanna fix something financially or um, purpose. I don't know what it is, but I think that's our common denominator. Now, I don't pretend to fix anyone because I'm not a therapist. I'm not a psychologist, um, but I do have some experience on accepting myself, starting with you know the things that I have to accept for myself, working on my self-confidence, empowerness, and um, trusting my vision. And I apply those concepts in my own business and I don't give them the glory to them. I give glory to God for being where I am, but I think they have helped me to navigate through all the seasons of the business, okay? so. The purpose of this training, people think is, okay, I'm gonna teach, I'm gonna give them, right? But honestly, I wanna know who is in my business, who is in my organization. Once you get to a 16, yes, you want a bigger check. Yes, you, yes, you wanna grow your business. But in my case, I wanna know that I have a stable business. I wanna know that the people that is in my organization has the ability to handle and manage their own business. So my business is not safe, but it's solid, or it gives me the idea of knowing what I need to do in order to solidify my business, okay? So I, I tell them, you know, um, this is, it's, it's also a selfish reason why I'm doing this training. I wanna know who is in my business and I wanna get to know them personally. Um, so one thing that I've learned is that we start business and we start putting expectations on people that we bring into the business. We give them these expectations um, to be part of our organization, but we don't know their needs. We don't know how they handle different situations. Um, and we simplify the business, giving them five steps to do. Okay, go reach out to people, call, call them, put them in front of the message, follow up with them, close, train them, duplicate them and do it all over again. So that's the expectation, right? This is what you have to do. This is your business, this is your job. However, I've been learning and I didn't know that I was learning obviously since the, since the very, very beginning. I, I started my business nine years ago and the first lesson that I had in this business was one personality that I couldn't understand. Someone in my business was crying all the time, thought that I had something against him um, and it was a very difficult relationship because I didn't understand that my expectations on that person were completely wrong because we come here with our own background, our own history, our own experiences in life, our own level of self-esteem, our own environment, our own household, and we are giving them the role of leadership. But if you don't know how to lead your own household, if you don't know how to lead your own finances, if you don't know how to lead your feelings, that emotional maturity that you need to get to this level, 
that's where the cracks start opening and our expectations as a business leaders is just go call people, go close them, go duplicate them, go train them, but it's just way more behind this, right? So how do I start managing my own expectations as a leader is obviously going through that growth process that I'm requiring for people. I cannot demand from people to be leaders in my own, my own organization if I don't leave my own household, if I, don't, if I don't leave my own decisions, if I don't leave my own finances. We had a great training yesterday. As I said, this is my last week. And on my last week, I bring guests to this training. And yesterday was Ryan, something new that I did. Um, and he was talking about finances. I said, what he said, what do you want me to talk about? I said, you know what? Let's talk about finances. Let's talk about the relationship that we have to establish with money in order to get to this level and attain and attain um, the responsibility to handle the, all the money that is gonna come to your life if you're ready for that. And it has, a lot has to do, oh my gosh, a lot has to do with our own background. Grandfathers, mothers, parents, everything they taught us and everything life taught us because we're, most of us get here you know, in our 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, we had a life before coming to network marketing, but the expectation is the same. It's a cookie cutter business that I think if we will handle it different as a leader, as a leaders, it will bring different results. It will bring different expectations. Now, what are the results that I've seen in this training that I've done for a year? I have had people that came with 5,000 volume and ended up the, the training with 35,000 volume. I have names and last names and ranks. Uh, I have people that have found their balance in the process. I have people that, um, that have seen the reality of the business by the time they graduate. Because one of the things I tell them is, listen, there's 40 people here. I, I love that all of you wanna train with me, but the reality is only 10 of you or less are gonna finish this training. And I tell them a story, and most of you probably don't know this, but. I didn't start my um, professional life as a journalist. I actually started as an engineer. So in Colombia, we get out of school super early, super immature. And I was thinking oh, always because of the lack of finances in my own household, what am I gonna do to get money? What am I gonna do to get better in life? Oh, and there was this career coming from Germany. There was only in Brazil, Germany, and they opened it in Colombia at the time. And it was something engineer, something weird, but I got to that university, I got to that school, always pioneering, right? Uh, and I started on, on um, engineering. And I remember the teacher, one of the teachers said, okay, awesome, you're like 300 people, only 40 of you are gonna gra graduate. I was like, what, how disrespectful. We were like 16, 17 years old, finding our own way in our world, not knowing what are the expectations, what were the requirements that we needed to go through those five years of university in, the, in that case in Colombia. Sure enough, by my second semester, I was sick and tired of numbers. I was looking at the people in front of the backyard uh, doing journalism with cameras and mics and having fun. And I was like, what am I doing here? I'm in the wrong part of the world. So I switched. But switching careers in Colombia is like the most horrible thing you can do for your parents and your family because it shows you're unstable and what are you going to do with your life? So it's a cultural thing. So I went through that process of switching and going back to my hometown with my family, feeling lower than an ant. And, and what is my purpose in life? But this is what I want to do. But this is what I started doing. Anyway, I learned at that moment that if we don't identify the roots of why are we doing what we do, we're gonna fail in the process or we're gonna extend the process to the point that it gets tedious. So one of the things that this training has taught me is that we are not equipping, equipping the people, our people with the right tools. And it's not a promotion every month. It's not a virtual office. In fact, a lot of people leave my um, my training because they think, and I give them the expectation very clearly, but they think they're going to tra be trained on their back office or on product or a compensation plan. That's not how we start. 
at, at some points we do touch those points because they're important. But I said, listen, if you come here for product knowledge, if you come here, we have a lot of leadership and the company puts amazing trainings on that. That's not my training about. My training is to take the layers of these people that are working with me and to help them identify why are they doing the business, what is required for them to do the business in their own personal life. I went through that experience in the very beginning as well. I said, my personal life, my household, my partnership with the person I chose, it's a mess. How am I going to demand from the people that I'm bringing to this business if I want to make it to the top to be leaders when I cannot lead my own household? And I started making decisions in my life towards me getting better, me, Christina, getting better, finding those layers in my life that I needed to feel in order to demand quality in my business, in order to demand volume in my business, in order to demand leadership in my business. And again, um, I talk based on my experience. It doesn't mean I'm right, um, but I'm very, very happy to um, ha now have a process of a training that now I call breaking cycles breaking cycles. You need to break cycles in order to get to the level that you want to get. And I imagine getting to an A16 is your, your maximum level. Um, and breaking cycle, cycles, again, it's a mentality cycle. It's uh, relationship cycles. It's faith. It's finances. There's a lot more involved that call, duplicate, follow up in the people that we bring to our business. And why are we doing all this? Because what am I doing all this? Because I want to solidify. I want to grow, but I want to solidify the people that have already that are already here, that have already put their um, their hopes and dreams here and actives. Um, I don't know if I missed something. Um, uh, da, 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 da. So breaking cycles, and I want to tell you a story that I've been telling people around this week. So last week. Um, we received a letter from this OPD Academy, I think it's called, where, where they train kids uh, to take them to the Olympic Games. And we received this letter for uh, our son, uh, Mateo, to be trained on soccer, that he was going to be part of this group. And, you know, I'm very open about this is all God and his dad, not me. Uh, and Mateo has been doing soccer since he's, he turned three years old. Um, he was, he literally was kicking in my belly before, um, before he was born. Anyway, so we got this letter and in this letter said, okay, parents, you know, congratulations. We welcome to the team. If you decide to accept, these are the expectations. Your kids are going to start traveling on their own. We don't want to see you until we, until the, the game time you can go, but the kids are going to be separated. Uh, with their coaches and traveling with their mates and um, and that's the life they're going to start living if you decide to accept. Um, so when I read that I started crying, literally crying and this was last week because I thought oh my gosh he just turned 12 and he's going to start doing his own life and, and I'm going to have to let him go, right? I'm going to have to um, trust that in this 12 years uh, for those moments that I'm not going to be there, he's going to apply what I have taught them. So I, in the moment of, that I had those feelings, I went to my brother and I said to him, everything that I told you guys. And I said, I feel so sad. I don't know why, but I'm so blessed. And I'm so happy that he's able to experience this. And, and I'm not going to be able to travel with him. That was like my main fixation, right? And he said, well, no, you're wrong. You are going to be able to travel because you position yourself throughout your life to not have a boss and to have the finances to do whatever you want to do with your time and your money and you're going to be there and then he answered with these texts that actually it was I felt worse than when I started with that call I said uh, when I started telling him and he said not like me that when the basketball team in Colombia told me that I was going to carry the third place, the, the trophy third place um, on the nationals. The photographer asked me if I wanted, if, if, if he could take the picture from me carrying the trophy. And I said, no, this is my brother talking. And I said, no, 
um, because how are we going to pay for that picture? And no one is going to come to see me because, I mean, there's, that's another personal story, but um, no one's going to come to see me. So no, don't take my picture. I didn't know that. Where I'm 45, he's 44, 41. I didn't know that when, when he was 11, when he was 12, my son's age. And I started bullying, just reading that message. But then I thought, you know what? We broke the cycle. He and I broke the cycle. Our kids don't have to experience that. Last, year, last week, we also celebrate him to raise his network to a million dollars network. And obviously, you know, everything that I'm living because of actives and because everything that I have uh, overcome to get here has put us in a position where our kids are not gonna experience what we did. But again, if we don't understand who is in our business and don't help and we don't put the time and help them to go through those layers necessary to make that call, to make that follow-up, to duplicate a system, we're just gonna have a mediocre business if it. And that's pretty much the process that I've been trying to work on my own, not on everyone else, on my own in the last eight years. So I wanted to share that with you. Thank you for the time. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was awesome. I love hearing these stories. I love hearing, in a way, it's it's kind of like a testimonial. Every time we hear about this stuff, about the experiences, about where each of you have come from, it helps me reconnect to why I do what I do. It helps me, and it's not just the corporate side of actives. You know, this 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 extends beyond just oh uh, well, we have to we have to duplicate, we have to follow up with all those steps. Those are the means to an end, but you and people like you, Christina, as you share your stories, remind me of what it is that I am doing to create the life that I want for my wife, for my kids, and for myself. So thank you for that, for that gentle reminder, that emphatic thank reminder. Thank you very much. All right. <sighs> to close off, I want to turn some time over to uh, our very own David Brown. I want to remind you again that for those that are just popping on, there are some schedule things that I want to update you on very quickly. I apologize for the second go around for everyone else. Uh, we have our call center hours. They're gonna be extending those hours on March 31st where it's the end of the month. They're gonna be working up until 8 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. So jot that down. Uh, with our new call schedule, we have something going on every Tuesday night of the month, but this is the first time that we've had five weeks in a month five Tuesdays in a given month. So for the last Tuesday this month, we're gonna be doing a product uh, training. So that's gonna be March 30th. Um, make sure that you jot that down. And finally, active school is changing to the second Saturday every month, no longer on the third, but the second Saturday of every month. So that means April's session will be on April 10th. All right, cool. All right, Mr. David, I'll leave the time to you. Thanks, Dale. Um, Christina, that was great. I like that idea of breaking uh, breaking cycles. We all have to do that in order to um, move forward. I, I often say that <clears throat> sometimes we think that we found our groove, and uh, what we really found is a rut that we're in, and uh, it's a hard it's hard for us to get out of it. And um, it really ties into what um, Dr. Maroon said last night. For those of you that were able to listen to his call, wasn't that interesting? Um, that he was very open about. Um, failures and problems he had in his own life. I mean, here he was, this world famous neurosurgeon. And, you know, I don't know about you, but it's a little uncomfortable sometimes, isn't it, to hear, um, I mean, it's sad when we hear about someone's parent passing away like his father. But then when he was op very open and said he came home and found that his wife had left him with their two children, all of a sudden, you know, that gets a little uncomfortable to hear some of that stuff sometimes. Those are very personal details. And yet he's talked about it before. And he, he talked about how it was a wake-up call in some respects. Well, it was in some respects, but it sent him into this deep depression. Wasn't that something to see him? Here's a guy who had been on the cover of um, 
many US magazines as a famous neurosurgeon he had been on TV. And then there's a picture of him pumping gas at a, at a truck stop. I mean, that was quite a juxtaposition, but it's interesting. And I think that the example that he talked about of having his banker friend reach out to him and say, let's go for a run. I think that's exactly what Christina was just talking about. That banker, maybe as Joe, as Dr. Maroon said, maybe he was doing it because he was concerned about whether Dr. Maroon is going to be able to make good on the mortgage note. <laughs> he, wanted to, he wanted to help him out and, and snap him out of whatever, whatever um, problem that he was in. But, but it worked. And, um, and so he reached out to someone in his group among his banking clientele, uh, client base. Um, and, uh, and he didn't really, you know, like Christina said, she said, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a therapist, and neither was this banker. But he just had a suggestion as to how he thought that Joe could make a, a change to get just give him a little bit of a victory under his belt. And in this case, it was you know, taking a lap around the track or two laps and, and, and kind of changing his mindset even as he changed his physical health. And, um, and, I, and I think that's awesome. In fact, you know, we talk a lot about enrollment and finding new people and all that kind of stuff. And I don't, don't know that we spend enough time talking about really how do we find, how do we help those people that are already in our group that said yes to us? And when they said yes, they did so because as, you, as Christina said, they had particular hopes and dreams. There was a reason that they joined actives. Those reasons aren't always the same. Sometimes it was to get better health. Sometimes it's that they just had a hope that there was a, a business opportunity for them that somehow they might be able to, to increase their family's income. It might've been a, just a des desire to be part of something bigger than, than themselves and be part of a, a bunch of people who seem to have their act together and, <laughs> and they wanna see if they can, that they can move forward. And, and I do think that we sometimes forget about them and, uh, and don't realize. In fact, that's really why we have all of these meetings. Why, why do we have this call? Why do we have the active school? Why do we do all these things? It's in order to, for people to plug in and do something else to break the other, the cycles in their lives that have not been very productive for them to this point. And so why do we invite um, each of you and others to share your particular stories and what's working for you, what's not working for you? Again, it's to plant seeds so people can, um, can, can tie in and say, hmm, how does this apply to me? And so on that note, I would simply, you know, even though it took a lot of courage to invite those people to learn about actives in the first place, and sometimes we feel like a pest when we're trying to get people to pay attention, but I do think that to um, be insistent and be um, uh, constant in reminding people to plug in to these types of calls and others, that's a way of breaking that cycle. Um, I mean, if they're already doing great and, um, and they're all on their way to the top, fine. Um, then the advice might just be keep doing what you're doing. But if they're not, Okay, uh, if they're not, it probably makes sense. Well, why don't you try this? You know, it's, it's kind of like a person I was talking with someone the other day um, who had, um, he has been considering investing in our company. Really nice guy. Um, and uh, he's impressed with our results. And I'd sent him product to try. And um, I said, so how are your results, Jim? Did you, uh, did you have any good results? He said, well, to be honest with you, I, I took it for a couple of days and I just put it on the shelf and I didn't, I, I you know, so I didn't really notice anything. <laughs> and I thought, well, of course you didn't notice anything. You didn't keep taking the product. And, and we're not surprised, are we, when people don't have a good experience with our products if they haven't been taking them? Of course, they're not gonna have a good experience. They're not gonna have any experience whatsoever. But the same thing is true on the business side. If they just dabble, if they just come to a meeting here and come to a meeting there and try this for a little bit and try that for a little bit, they're not gonna have a good experience with that either. It's really establishing a new cycle, a new habit um, of, of doing something that they haven't done before um, in order to establish those, those successful patterns. A good example of that was last week, um, I went to Phoenix um, at the invitation of Coco and Trish and, and Gloria. And, um, and I'll tell you what, they showed me, they, do, they were doing some uncomfortable things. At least I would think that they're uncomfortable. They were reaching out to people, some of whom they just met for the first time. Can you imagine this? Um, you know, obviously Coco is from Mexico and speaks Spanish and, and she is tied in with the Latina community. 
um, in, in Phoenix and she put me in front, she and Gloria put me in front of a group of, of uh, kind of a Latina empowerment group, all women, all Latinas um, and um, all speak Spanish. Some of them spoke English, uh, not all of them spoke English fluently. And, um, and, and who do they put in front of them? Not Ryan Thompson, who was a logical choice. They put me, um, and uh, and so that wasn't easy for them. It wasn't even particularly logical for them, but it was a great experience. And uh, and they're doing things in order to put the message out there. Um, I think if we if we ask ourselves where do we take this, I think we ask ourselves who needs what we have to offer, who needs better health, who needs more income in their lives, and who just needs me to reach out and and uh, be a, a listening ear or whatever it is. And I think you'll find that everyone in your group as well as other people in your, in your sphere of influence fall into that category in some way or another. And so um, I just want to, although she doesn't need me to ratify what she just said, I really do <laughs> endorse um, what Christina said. And, and the things that we reach out and help people on, again, um, might seem to be unrelated to the business. I think that when that banker reached out to Dr. Maroon and asked him to go for a run, that wasn't going to make Joe a better neurosurgeon. It wasn't going to um, necessarily increase the, the likelihood that the truck stop was gonna be successful. It wasn't necessarily guaranteed to snap him out of his funk, but guess what? It was a friend that reached out and was caring and said, hey, what you're doing is not working. Let's, let's do something else, even if it's as simple as taking a run around a high school track. Um, and I think that's, that was really impactful for me as I listened to that story. And, and isn't it something? Uh, Dr. Maroon has quite a stature. He's been recognized um, in a variety of areas. You don't get to be the head of a department at a large university hospital if you don't have a lot of credentials and a lot of success behind you. Do you know that he's done over 30,000 surgeries um, on people? And, and guess what most of those surgeries are? If you're a neurosurgeon, most of those surgeries involve removing a tumor, a tumor from a brain, um, uh, from a spine. Um, and um, those are, and so some of those tumors are cancerous. Some of those tumors are not cancerous, but even if they're not cancerous, as a tumor grows, um, it puts pressure on the brain and, 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 and stops the brain from being able to function um, correctly. And so I don't know if you were surprised when you heard them talk about arrow and the ingredients and weight loss, you might thought might have thought, what is a neurosurgeon and his, and his assistant, Jeff Boast, who's also assisted on almost all of those 30,000 surgeries, what do they know about weight loss? That seems to be kind of a, a weird thing. But as it turns out, because of the link, you know, because of all these surgeries, they're very interested in cancer and cancer prevention. And they know that maintaining a proper weight helps to reduce inflammation and, and this therefore reduces cancer. They knew about curcumin, they knew about butyric acid well before they met me. Why? Because they had looked into this as a means of, of cancer prevention and better health. And by the same token, these things of reaching out to people, helping them um, get through whatever they're getting, breaking whatever cycles are keeping them down and, and introducing new, new cycles to help them um, achieve their goals. Um, it takes it to another level. It takes it from just hoping and wishing and dreaming about it to actually showing some accomplishment. Um, uh, you know, having had children myself and now grandchildren, I'm, I'm, I don't think that you can give kids or people uh, self-esteem. Um, I don't think you can do it just by being kind to them, by giving them trophies for participation um, or any of those things. I think the way you help someone uh, um, get confidence and self-esteem is to help them accomplish something. And it doesn't have to be something grand or something huge, just help them accomplish something and have a little victory under their belt. And when that happens, their belief in themselves uh, their self-esteem, their confidence grows. And they said, hmm, I succeeded in running one, one lap around the track. Maybe I can do two laps around the track. And that, and that builds. And, and aren't we all glad that, that uh, Dr. Maroon is not still pumping gas at a truck stop in Wheeling, West Virginia? Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's a perfectly honorable thing. But he's not impacting people's lives 
um, no matter how kind and no matter what good of a deal, no matter how good the food was at the truck, at the truck stop, <laughs> he wasn't gonna make the same difference in the world as he has by resuming his career and even going beyond that as a neurosurgeon. And so um, I think there's a real lesson in that for all of us. So um, I look forward to all of us plugging in, by the way, just a note on why we changed the active school date is so that we wouldn't um, conflict with the Spanish active school. So we wanna make sure that we're not having those on the same days. And so that's that's something that we picked up on. And, and I want to um, again, remind you that, that Tuesday evenings are basically reserved for active uh, events and there's going to be lots of them continuing on. And also uh, just put it out there, Coco and Trish, for example, called me and asked me if I would be willing to participate in some of their meetings. And I said, yes. And to the extent that I, my schedule allows, uh, whether it be by phone or in person, if I can, if I or anybody else on the Actives team can help you with your business, um, helping you break cycles, helping you do whatever it takes to succeed or people within your group to succeed, let us know. And, uh, and we'll do whatever we can to, to help that as well. At the end of the day, we don't succeed if you don't succeed. And if you do, we do. You know, it's a very symbiotic relationship. <laughs> and from that standpoint, it, it, it's great. So um, that's all I've got today. Thanks, Dale. Thanks, Stu. And thanks uh, again, um, Christina, for helping, for, for setting the tone for us today. And, and uh, hope everybody has a great week. Back to you, Dale. Excellent. Well, what do you say? Should we get our wheel of fortune spinning all right let's do it why don't we just say mary porter, mary porter. and save ourselves all the uh, i know the, all that stuff griselda great griselda make sure you send, um our let me see yeah make sure you send um angie your ID number, and we will get you those rewards points for today, okay? All right, everybody, thanks so much for being here. You've been great. Christina, thank you again. Have an awesome week. We'll see you next time. See you guys. Bye, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.